Good morning. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Clarence and Viola Hare. A note about our procedure today at Mass. At communion time, we ask that you please remain kneeling or sitting in your places. Father will come to each of you at your pews to distribute communion. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. And Teva. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give him give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Be 
the responsorial psalm, Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid. For through him, for from him, and through him, and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, welcome back 
for, for a long time, I have not been to this Mass. So, as we are the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time, the theme is very apt for each and every one of us. A call, a call to discipleship. A call to know more and more about Jesus. A call to rediscover who Jesus is. Maybe in the year 2000, when I went to the seminary, the first week of my stay, my rector walked into my classroom and handed a white paper to all of us. We were 70 seminarians who wanted to become priests in our class. He told us, why do you want to become priest? You know, he told, write the purpose. Why do you want to become priest? Some said, I wanted to become a preacher like this saint. I wanted to become a miracle worker, serve the poor. You know, he said, you need to write only four sentences. You know, within four sentences, you need to complete the purpose of your call. I could not write anything. You know, if I say that I'm going to serve the poor, he's going to ask me, are there not priests and nuns serving the poor? You know, you need to do your mission in a special way. They need to identify you. They need to distinguish you with your mission. So, the first sentence I wrote, I wanted to become a missionary. I wanted to serve the poor, you know. My rector took my paper, he read, and he was laughing and he was telling, you know, don't you think that there are no priests serving the poor? Take, ba take your bag, go home. You know, that's what he told me. He did not tell me alone, to all of us. Because in the beginning, though we felt the call of God, as I was 16 years old boy in the seminary, I never thought about it. But later, before becoming priest, maybe three months before my ordination, Again, my superior gave me a white paper and said, write what you wanted to become after becoming a priest. You know, the same question. This time, I just wrote, I wanted to become a missionary. Evangelize the world. That's what I wrote. As a result, I was sent to Africa, then to U.S., I don't know, still, wherever, the Lord wishes, I may go. But what is important here, the gospel of today, we have St. Peter declaring the purpose of Jesus, that he is the Messiah, the anointed one, the chosen son of God. The first reading we have it is only the individual prophecy in the book of Isaiah. All the prophecies in the book of Isaiah is directed towards different countries. You know, are uh, indicating a particular group of people. Except in this passage, where the prophecy is directed towards Shebna, one of the official, a governor, an administrator, of the king's palace. So in the gradation, he comes, or he ranks after the king. So he has the keys of the house of David. So here, the Lord brings a case against him. He is guilty of arrogance, pride, not depending on the God of Israel, but rather, he depends on the human resource. He asked King Hezekiah to wage war against the Assyrians with the help of the Egyptians. How can the chosen people take help from the pagans? So the prophet goes and pleads the king, says, 
You are not supposed to do that. Trust in the Lord, He will take care of you. He was not welcome, you know. The king never accepted the advice of the prophet. As a result, God brings the replacement. God says that he is going to take the position from him, the keys of the, king, the house of David, and give to his one of the servant who is humble, who is not boastful, a simple person. So in a way, when you and I failed to understand Jesus, when we fail to do the mission of Jesus, the ministry that is entrusted to you and me, then God has the plan B. He may take you and replace somebody in your place. That's what we see in the second reading of today, St. Paul, speaking about the wisdom of God which nobody can predict. God has his own plan. God does not think as human thing. For example, the election of a King David, God took a shepherd boy to be the great king over Israel. You know, he, he made him great. You know, God chooses the weak, the downtrodden, the poor, and makes them greater. The same in the case of our Lord Jesus Christ. He chose ordinary fishermen as his disciples, especially St. Peter. So coming to the gospel, Jesus, as a human person, as, you know, it is human tendency to know more about us. You know, you all have a mirror in your house. When you stand before the mirror, what do you do? You look at yourself, you know. That is used for beautifying ourselves, to correct some kind of a, maybe in the process of a beautifying oneself. But rather Jesus also ask one of the human question. I also do that wherever I travel in Africa or here. Most of the time I ask my staff, how do you feel about me? You know, is the people happy about me? Do they understand? What do you think about my homilies? Do you like the stories, the jokes I tell? So I don't ask to everybody. I ask some of them whom I know better and they give me some kind of feedback. So with that, you know, feedbacks are good to process better. To become a better person, you need some kind of criticism. So Jesus just wanted to make sure how far the disciples understood him. So he asks, you know, the first question, he challenges them. Who do the people say that I am? You know, when I ask, when I come to you personally and ask, what do the people speak about me? It's very easy to tell anything, you know. Some say, you know, the, prof the disciples said, some say, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, are one of the ancient prophets. Jesus said, well, okay, what is your personal experience with me? Who do you say that I am? Now there was a dead silence. You know, when I ask you personally, when I direct the question towards you, what do you say about me? If you say bad about, about me, tomorrow when we meet in the gathering space, you may go towards east, I may go towards west. Women and talk and laugh and chat together. So always we allow to use the word a lot of pleasing words, maybe, but I don't know. I'm not criticizing anyway. I'm coming to the point. The disciples were very silent. But Simon Peter comes forward and makes a remarkable statement. You are Christ, son of the living God, the Messiah. You know, Jesus was so much taken up. You know how, you know, St. Peter, how weak he is. St. Peter, according to the Gospels, he is very easy to make statements. 
and afterwards he regrets, regrets for it. For example, when Jesus was walking on the water, he also wanted to walk. At first he did well. Afterwards, due to fear, he could not. You know, he was very weak in faith. You know, these disciples have been with a couple of months with Jesus. They have witnessed how Jesus changed the water into wine at the wedding at Cana. And they have seen how Jesus gave sight to the blind, how he cleansed the lepers. They were terrified when Jesus was casting out the demon from the possessed. They were there, present, when Jesus was uh, bringing the dead into life. And they also tasted the loaves and the fishes that Jesus multiplied just two or three days before. They traveled with him. They stayed with him. So now, as the fruit of all these experiences, Peter comes forward and tells, you are Christ. Who is Jesus Christ for you, dear brothers and sisters? Personally speaking, what, what will be your answers? Some, some of you may say, he is the son of God, second person in the Trinity, Redeemer, who died for our sins. Other than that, personally speaking, how do you personalize Jesus in your life? How do you look at him? A teacher, a counselor, a friend. It is up to everyone's understanding. But coming to the point, after the confession of Peter, he was given a ministry. Jesus tells them, you know, among the four Gospels and among the twelve disciples, it is only Saint Peter who received personal blessings from Jesus. None other than John or Andrew or anybody else. It is only Peter who received a personal blessing from Jesus. And Jesus gives five blessings. You are Peter. Or uh, the other version they call Cephas would mean rock. And I will build my church upon you. I will give, give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against you. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So these are the five blessings and the ministry Jesus gives him. So it is certain that when you profess, when you confess truly that Jesus is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, who is he for you? He will confer a ministry upon each and every one of us. We all have a special ministry in the church today. So, my question to all of you, what is your ministry today on behalf of Jesus? You know, you and I need to answer that. Before we reach to the eternal judgment, you know, before the seat of the judgment of Jesus, he will ask you, who are you? What will be your answer? If you ask me now, I could say I'm Father Anthony, the associate. That I like that word, the associate, from St. Anthony, from Fargo. Other than that, what can I say about me? If I tell about me, that is self-glory. You know, people have to tell about you. Who you are. Kind, loving, serving, understanding, what not. We need a lot of adjectives to be added upon us. So that is very much important. But why at all? Jesus chose Saint Peter, a weak person who denied him, who had a very weak faith, who did not trust in him, who does not want Jesus to undergo the, the passion, death, you know, he just, you know, the next week gospel, we will see Peter coming and warning Jesus, this shall not happen to you. Then Jesus tells, get away or get behind me, Satan. You know, Jesus himself 
who blessed him will call him satan you know such a person how he became a source on which jesus is going to build his church for example i will give you among the 12 disciples we have judas iscariot and saint peter both of them sinned one denied another betrayed after some time both of them felt sorry for their sin peter was bitterly crying so also judas iscariot you know but why the church does not you know he felt sorry for the sin that he committed but we don't call him a saint he felt sorry that he betrayed the innocent blood and he went to the point of killing himself but saint peter came back to the lord you know it is not that when you commit sin you feel sorry you are not done with that you and i need to come back to the lord we have a mission a ministry to be carried out so peter came back so that's the reason jesus gives him the great task to be the head of the church and today that power has been shared by the pope that is given to the bishops in the local church then to the pastors to the priest in the immediate church so that's the way the ministry that was given to peter by jesus is shared this administered so dear brothers and sisters this sunday the catholic church is inviting you and me to regenerate our mission to rediscover jesus in our lives so let us ask the good lord to shower his choices blessing upon each and every one of us that we may know more and more about jesus through the scriptures that we may love him and serve him alone let the name of jesus be praised forever amen please stand i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible i believe in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god born of the father before all ages god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made can substantial with the father through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins they look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come amen dear brothers and sisters trusting in the providence of the lord let us place our prayers and intentions before the lord for our pope francis the successor of saint peter that he may use the power of the keys wisely according to god's plan we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for those who accept the burden of public office that the powers of evil may not prevail over them we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for those living with disabilities that they may not be pushed aside overlooked or underestimated we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer 
for the sick and suffering of our parish community and families. We pray especially for Jack Recamp, Julie Horder, Hooder, Joan First Forstner, Corey Peck, and Dan Forstner, some son of Bob and Joan Forstner, and those on our prayer chain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may quickly come to the fullness of joy in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, source of all wisdom, your son entrusted his power to his church as we offer these prayers. Help us to fulfill your plan for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once and for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruit of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be cohorts of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, in the name of the body of Lord Jesus Christ. Lamb of God, in the name of the body of Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of God pray for me, say for eternal life.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have two announcements today. Religious education is starting soon. If you have not registered your children yet, please do so through our website. There will be a mandatory meeting for all parents next Sunday, beginning at noon, in the social hall to provide information and changes for the year ahead. Please make plans to attend. Even though this year's Fall Bazaar has been canceled, we are still going ahead with the annual raffle. Please pick up your raffle tickets at, in St. Francis Gathering Place and grab those of your friends and family too. We will soon mail out the remaining tickets to those who haven't picked them up. So help, so your help to deliver these tickets will save money on the postage. Sold tickets can be turned in to the parish office. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, 